What exactly is the sspace CFG file, and why should I care? To put it bluntly, the sspace CFG file is the most important configuration file on your entire sspace server. It's basically a text file that has a series of lines with settings, parameters, and values in them that lets you control how sspace operates. Some of the settings in there apply to the entire sspace server. A lot of them have optional arguments that let you control specific applications or databases. Some of the settings apply to block storage and aggregate storage databases. Some just apply to either BSO or ASO. Be very, very careful with the sbase CFG because some of the settings in there can impact performance both positively and sadly in some cases negatively. If you end up changing the sbase CFG file, most often you're going to need to stop and restart the sbase server to get it to pick up those settings and make sure that it enacts those for your sbase server. There are 10 major categories of sbase CFG settings. Some are pretty easy to understand, like backup and recovery. Some are fairly extensive and complicated and cover things like calculations, such as how many threads you want each calculation to handle. Some handle data importing and exporting. For example, also how many threads you want to use for importing or exporting. There are settings in there to handle things like failover and clustering, logging or error handling, memory management, there are some lesser used settings for things like which ports you want to open up when you connect to sbase. Query management is extremely important but often forgotten where you can put in things like query governors. You can also handle how sbase manages partitioning and there's a new setting entirely related to hybrid analysis. So how can you update this magic sbase CFG file? Well, it's nothing but a text file, and an initial one is actually created when you install sbase and it's put in your sbase bin directory. So navigate down to that bin directory on your server, open it up with your favorite text editor. Mine happens to be Windows Notepad. It's a very expensive application, but it does come with its own free copy of Microsoft Windows when you buy it. So use Notepad to open up that sbase CFG. Make sure that if you change it, you save the new file also to that same name, sbase.cfg, and I strongly recommend you keep a copy of the old sbase CFG in case you really screw something up. Make sure you save the file in the sbase bin directory over the top of the sbase CFG that was already there, and then you're going to need to stop and restart the sbase server just to make sure it picks up the changes in that configuration file. There are only a couple of syntax rules that you need to follow when updating the sbase CFG. First of all, put each setting on its own separate line in the file. Just press enter at the end of the line. You don't need to have a semicolon at the end. It's smart enough to know that a return key means go to the next line. We're done with the setting. There are people who put in blank lines in the SBA CFG file. That's fine. If it ever encounters a line that it doesn't recognize a setting, such as a blank line, it just skips it and goes on to the next one. Now, there are a couple of conventions that most people follow when updating the SBA CFG. First of all, Put your sbase CFG settings in uppercase. It just makes it easier to spot. Second of all, if you want to have a comment, start that line with a semicolon. Now you don't actually need to use a semicolon. You can use a hashtag, you can use an apostrophe. Sbase just looks at that line, says, hey, he wants to use the setting that starts with a semicolon. Tries to find the setting that starts with a semicolon, realize there isn't one, just skips the rest of the line and goes on to the next line. Now this is an important thing to realize. It will not invalidate when it sees a line it doesn't understand, it just skips it and goes on to the next line. So if you spell something wrong, you might think that it's actually using that line when it's not. Or if you get the syntax for that line wrong, maybe you specified a parameter incorrectly, it's never going to tell you it couldn't read it. It's just gonna go right on to the next line. So be really careful when updating the SBA CFG file to make sure you spell things correctly and use the parameters correctly. So here's an example of an sbase CFG file wholly oriented around optimizing sample basic. So I gathered each individual section together. That line at the top, update calc false, turns off intelligent calculation for the entire server. The next section, set my calc cache numbers. And then I really want sample basic to calculate quickly, so I make sure I allot seven CPUs to it. Then I do other things such as setting the size of my dynamic calc cache, how many lock blocks do I want it to use, I turn on some query governors just to make sure nobody runs a really massive query against sample basic, and a few other things. You'll notice that there are some settings you can put into an sbase CFG, and you can also do those same settings inside of an sbase calc script. So when would you want to use each one? 
Well, I use my SBase CFG for my most frequently used settings. The things that in general I want to apply to the entire database, the entire application, or the entire server. And then if for some reason I need to overwrite it for a specific calculation, I tend to do that within the SBase calc script. Also, if there are things you want to apply to the entire server, those settings can only be done inside of the SBase CFG. There are some settings that just make a whole lot more sense inside of a calc script. I just showed you an example of turning on calc parallel at the SBase CFG level. That's just because sample basic is pretty simple. For a more complicated database, I'm almost always going to want to use the set calc parallel command because my individual script might need one CPU or it might need eight CPUs, but it's really going to depend on what I'm calculating inside of that calc script. So the SBase CFG is always the default setting, then the calc script is always the one that overrides what's in the SBase CFG. For the most part, the SBase CFG is a server-side configuration file, but you actually can create an SBase CFG on the client side. You do have to have the SBase runtimes installed, and if you do, there will be an SBase bin directory. In general, there won't be an SBase CFG. You're going to need to create it in the client-side SBase bin directory. Now, there are only seven settings you're allowed to put in that SBase CFG. Agent port, APS resolver, net delay and net retry count, port inc, server port begin, and server port end. The most common ones you're likely going to want to change are net delay and net retry count. And this is because of an error you're going to see that says, timed out talking to the server, maybe you should try increasing your net delay and your net retry count. Most people see that error and think it's a server side error, when in reality it's actually telling you to update your client side SBase CFG, it just doesn't specify that anywhere. Now be really careful on a side note when updating the net delay and the net retry count. These were really designed for when networks were really, really slow or basically two tin cans connected by some really old Cat5 cable. Nowadays, if you see that error, it most likely means that your application on the SBase side of the server has crashed or the server itself has crashed. 